So now, first and foremost, we have to congratulate you and Kevin on your recent engagement. Thank you very much, Dave. I can only imagine how difficult it would be for someone coming out of the closet, but obviously your situation, what would be in the public eye, would have been significantly different. How did you cope with it all? Um, yeah, that, that whole kind of subject is something that it, it was something that started off making things a bit harder, but in the end, ironically, it made things easier for me because, um, you know, being in the public eye, you know, once I came out, it was on the front page of the paper and the whole world knew straight away, so I didn't have to, like, come out, like five times a day to everyone I met yeah. as I went along. Um, yeah, I, I have to say, I mean, you know, particularly in the early days of Westlife and, you know, through throughout kind of Westlife's career, it was kind of, uh, it was quite a difficult experience, really, you know. Um, I think, you know, there was a lot of dark times for me, a lot of time spent alone in the hotel room, kind of just thinking about everything. And um, it's not something that I'd wish on anyone, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of been through all that and now coming out the other end luckily for me um, happy um, it kind of inspires me to kind of share my story and sort of tell people that are in that situation that things can turn out okay because you know there is the the, the horrible side of things which um, you know when people get into a very bad place in their head and you know they start thinking about very terrible things and, and the outcome isn't as happy for some people um, as it was for me you know and you know, well, I mean, the, the word suicide is is the big kind of bad word that, that you know, exists it's in reality and, and it happens. Yeah. A lot of people end up in a, in that place in their head and that, to me, it just killed me to, to think people are, you know, getting to that point. And I would do whatever I could to sort of explain to people that it doesn't have to be like that and that, you know, luckily in this day and age as well, um, things have turned out great in terms of society, you know, so... Um, yeah, it's just it, that's something that I'm really passionate about, you know, is sort of trying to stop the, the suicide type of thing, the depression type of, um, side of things, you know. Absolutely. When you did come out, the response was it was absolutely overwhelming and positive. Were you surprised by the reaction or were um, you worried? I kind of didn't really know how what to expect. I kind of knew that, you know, society, as I said, and fans and everyone um, were, were cool about people being gay um, because... You know, and this is something quite important. There was lots of celebrities on TV and in music that were yeah. out mm. and were gay uh, publicly. And I kind of looked and seen all the reactions of all the kind of fans and, and kind of thought to myself, well, you know, they're kind of supporting all these people. Um, and I think that's something that luckily for me, I was, suppose my coming out story was able to do for other people as well. They kind of, People look and they see their mum's reaction or their sister's or their friend's reaction to a celebrity coming out and that can help them to gauge what their kind of family and friends opinions are on gay people and um, I think every time a celebrity comes out and these people see their family and friends kind of go oh yeah I'm not sure you know what difference does it make or something um, that can be you know a positive experience um, for, for the kind of person who's in the closet to have you know. Um, you mentioned there about how you feel that people can be inspired by celebrities coming out. Did you yourself feel that Stephen Gately coming out kind of formed a template for you and what you could hope to expect? Yeah, um, before me, I mean, Stephen Gately um, is one sort of person that I suppose I, I've been compared to a lot over yeah. the years. You know, Westlife and Boyzone are always very comparable. And then you've got kind of, say, the gay one or whatever in the band. Um, so for that reason, you know, myself and Stephen's name ended up in, in the same kind of uh, story in the same paper, you know, quite a lot. Um, like, I mean, we didn't necessarily know each other very, very well, but I have to say, for me, when I seen him coming out, he was in a boy band. It was, it was kind of like, kind of like an out of body experience in a, in a strange way. It was like I, I was kind of looking at a sort of a story very similar to my own unfold, mm -hmm. unfolding in front of my eyes. So he definitely, his story and his kind of journey definitely inspired me and kind of, you know, taught me some things. Um, you know, also there's people like Will Young and Brian Dowling and in the public eye that it came out as well. And they're not only accepted, but they're highly celebrated, you know. So I think that, without a doubt, any other celebrities that came out before me um, done nothing but give me positive feelings about everything, you know. And those positive feelings help you to get into the, the good place in your head where you should be at, you know. Absolutely. And after um, Stephen's untimely death, there was a few stories in the press, particularly the one by Jan Moyer, who kind of in incorrectly suggested that Stephen's gay lifestyle had attributed to his death. What did you make of these kind of stories? Um, well, I think, first of all, that was a horrible story. And 
I would be yeah. part of this kind of crowd of people that would be, you know, um, whatever, like a, like putting that down, you know. Um, I think there's probably an element to her where she got a little bit kind of lazy and um, like her journalism wasn't very professional. Um, I think that she kind of probably wrote it. She probably writes 50 stories a month and she probably just, it was just probably another story that she just kind of whacked out and she didn't realise what she was, you know, sort of such a bold claim to make. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time journalists can kind of, I suppose, forget the, the responsibility that they have and get a bit, you know, um, get a bit lazy like that, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that journalists should respect their power, the power they have to kind of influence people's opinions and influence people's minds. And that was a very clumsy irresponsible story that she wrote um you know i don't know her so i don't know how homophobic she is mm. or isn't but i think that as i said it was a very irresponsible journalism you know and, and it was clearly a load of crap that you know the kind of the claims that she made about Stephen or any yeah. gay person were you know clearly just stupid really um, and i just think that she made a big mistake you know but the reaction that story was really um positive as in the public seemed to come together whether it be on twitter or on blogs and could have told her jan where you're wrong um, yeah. Do you think that same story would have got the same reaction ten or twenty years ago? Um, probably not. I mean, put it this way: like homophobia is is virgin on. Well, it's, I mean, it's it's not got to the point where it's not accepted by anyone. Um, but it's it's kind of not really, as a general rule, in public walking down the street, homophobia isn't really acceptable. You know, mm. um, it still exists, but it's not kind of something that. Like, you know, if you're in sort of, say, McDonald's queue and somebody shouted something homophobic, you can be guaranteed that they'll they'll kind of, most of the people in, in the queue will sort of, you know, stand up for, you know, the gay person or whatever. You know, yeah. society yeah. has kind of come a long way like that. And so 10 or 20 years ago, I doubt that would have been the same. People might have, let's say 10 years ago, people might have just said nothing or just kept quiet about it. or They would have been uncomfortable because they wouldn't have known how to deal with it and I think that nowadays people are more educated about gay people and therefore everyone knows what's acceptable what's not acceptable and I think one of the main problems with you know um, homosexuality through the years is people didn't understand it and a lot of the time people are scared of what they don't understand or yeah. know so for that reason it was kind of this taboo subject whereas all it takes is for everybody to talk about it and for it to be on the TVs and in stories and say Coronation Street and yeah. celebrities coming out and you know the person down the road or someone in your class in college being gay and all of a sudden it's not this strange weird thing that kind of is behind closed doors it's a part of everyday life and that's what's happening and that's what needs to continue to happen in order for it to kind of get to where it needs to be you know so your advice to young men and women coming out about their sexuality is definitely to just go for it and speak about it yeah, I mean, 100%. Uh, like, I cannot... I mean, I don't know. I can't, can I promise that everyone's mum or everyone's auntie or whatever is like is going to react positively? That's not something that anyone no. can promise to someone that's in the closet. But what I can say is that, in hindsight for me, anyone who would have had a problem with it, I literally would have went, well, whatever, then I don't really yeah. want you in my life. Where, you know, I, you know, I'm not... I mean, I don't know. It's It's not something that... There's no point in being kind of like living in dreamland like for me i got nothing but positive reactions as i said not everyone out there will will face the same kind of um response but i can guarantee you that your life will become a million times better and it's you have to be a bit selfish about it and think about yourself you know if you do have a homophobic brother or or a classmate or a parent um you know well screw them basically but you have to think about yourself and you have to be, make yourself happy in the, in in that situation um so i would just say come out and if if you have a homophobic brother then you still have your your support of your parents and your and your friends if you have a homophobic parent you still have your friends and your brothers you know it's like you know put it this way everyone's not going to go against you if one person does that's the worst that can happen and to be honest with you you're better off without that person in your life yeah, that's brilliant. Right? I agree. But I have to say, though, I don't think, I don't think people will find that, you know, parents are. I mean, my granny was the first person to call me screaming. Then she's like, <laughs> you know, my granny is, um, you know, around the ninety <laughs> benchmark age-wise. I'm not going to say her age, you know, but um, 
like she was ringing me on the phone kind of crying saying how happy she was and she can't wait to meet Kevin you know etc etc I like honestly I think that people kind of probably build it up in their minds so much that um, they get to a point where they don't come out but I think it's actually a bit weird it's like an anti-climax sometimes and when you do come out you expect kind of more reaction but it just isn't there you know yeah yeah well, Mark, that's been brilliant having the show. Thanks for taking the call. No worries at all. I hope I didn't waffle on too much. No, not no, at you're all. brilliant. I'm passionate about the subject, you know. <laughs> all the crap. Thank the best you. Best of luck to you and Kevin as well. Cheers. All right. Listen, thanks. Best of luck. luck. I'll speak to you soon, right? Thanks, Mark. Bye. 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 Bye.